morning I want to speak to you on what I've captioned operating by the spirit of faith. Operating by the spirit of faith. And our scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the verse number 13. 2 Corinthians 4, the verse number 13. The Bible says, We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. Hallelujah. We have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith. Then it says, as it is written, or according as it is written, I believe. What do you believe? The written word. Therefore, I speak the written word. You also believe. Therefore, you speak. Now, please listen and understand. Faith, as it is defined, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Though my eyes have not seen it, yet I believe it. That is faith. I have not let hold on it, yet I believe I have it. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very crucial. Very, very important. There are two dimensions of faith in scriptures. And today we will try to bisect and digest this particular two, two uh, dimensions of the faith we have in scriptures. Now we have number one, the word of faith. And then number two, the spirit of faith. The word of faith and the spirit of faith. Let's look at the book of Romans chapter 10, the verse number 6 down to the verse number 8. Romans 10, the verse number 6 down to the verse number 8. The Bible makes us to understand. Say, but the righteousness of uh, which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart who shall ascend in heaven that is to bring Christ down from above. Uh -huh. Or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead or from the grave. But what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Someone say word of faith. Say word of faith. I said in the first service, listen and listen well, that your language is a manifestation of your faith. Anything you say is a manifestation of what is in your heart. Bible says, with the heart man believed unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto deliverance. Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made for your miracle. So your confession, what you say, is a result of what is in your heart. Amen. I say amen. Very crucial. Very, very important. It tells us that what this means is that you can live a super, super natural, distinguished life here on earth. Though people are full of negative confessions, they prefer confession or confessing the negativity than the positivity. They believe in saying the wrong stuff than speaking the right thing. I am poor. I am broke. I am sick. I am finished. These are all negative events. Anytime you declare them, you are telling them to come to action. You are telling those words or those things you are confessing that it should manifest in your life. Praise God. 
I said, praise God. I remember years ago, when I was in the Bible school, I had an accident in the car. No, not that the car fell. I was sitting inside Trotro. You know Trotro? Bolga don't have Trotro, unfortunately. Because Bolga is a special town. It's only Bolga that doesn't have Trotro. Wa has Trotro. Tamale has Trotro. Every other town has Trotro. Only Bolga doesn't have Trotro. Clap your hands for your city. We, we, are, we are different. <laughs> Upper East is different. No Trotro. All right. Now, the Trotro, the seat, there was a metal like this. And if you don't know, if you know Accra, anytime it's evening and you're not getting car and trotter comes to park, the rush, you will clap your hands for, for people. So we're all rushing. And if you're rushing, you don't get a seat, you, you must go out. So I ran. Because it was on Sunday, I, must, I was in school and I had gone to visit one of my fathers. He's a prophet. Prophet Atabwachi. And I was now going. The time was gone. Around the Teshi area, and I was going to East Legon. Now, if you know this route, you understand. From Teshi, you must get to 37, a light, pick another car from 37 to East Legon or to Legon. Then from Legon, you now take another car to East Legon. So, three different cars. Now, at, and I was late. I must be on campus before seven. This was five o'clock. I hit my spine against the metal. Boom! It cuts. It had a sword there. From there, I started having excruciating pain. Unbearable one. Pain! For years, the pain was still there. Then, one day, I called a pastor friend. I said, please pray with me. Now, what happened? I said, remember him of what happened in the Bible school? Those days. Then, I uh, he said, oh, don't worry. You know, maybe that's what God has also given to you to handle as your infirmity. Because Bible says that. In fact, sincerely, he was quoting Bible but was misinterpreting Bible. That Paul also had an infirmity which he was dealing with. So maybe that's your own infirmity God has given you to also handle. Do you know, unconsciously, what he said sank into my head. Anytime I felt the person, well, God, well, doesn't matter. Then one day I came in contact with the miracle meal. They say book like that by Bishop David Wedipo. When I finished digesting the book, I realized that that confession and that word I heard wasn't the right word. I began to declare, I can't be sick. My body is healed. That pain is gone. I confess it. First day, the pain was there. I confess it. Second day, the pain was more. I confess it. The third day, the pain was there. I confess it. The fourth day, the pain was there. I confess the fifth day, the pain, the sixth day, the seventh day. I forgot of it. After three months, I now remember. I said, ah. I have some pain. Where is it? It disappeared. What you say is as a result of what you believe. So if you confess negativity, it means you believe in negativity. So you are declaring what you believe. So, they have to serve a can't tell. Sanya iman zahangur kalam genanza. Let me hear an amen. I don't like that amen. No? If you don't say a better amen, I will stop preaching. You will come and preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's Romans 10, the verse number 17. So your faith is as a result of your hearing. The question is, what are you hearing? Many of us are hearing the wrong stuff. You listen to negative news. You listen to bad events. Wrong things. Bad things about others. And when you meet them, start thinking, hey, 
I hear this one. That is why it is always good to hear rather positive information than the negative ones. Because the negative ones, they kill your spirit. They don't help you rise. They don't. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So anytime you hear the word, you are building up faith. Anytime you hear the word, you are raising up your faith to the level where you can get what you want to get. I read a story about John G. Lake. It was not raining in South Africa in his time. He needed water to wash his clothes. There was no water. He prayed, Father, let it rain. Let it rain in my house. Let the rain fall so I can get water to wash. Huh? It rained only in his house. Listen. Up. The rain fell only in his house. Where his plot end, that's where the rain stopped. Heavy. They collected water inside tank. Full. Then the rain stopped. Why? He had had enough of the word of God that boosted faith to the extent that he could speak to rain to fall only in his jurisdiction. Only in his area. And the rain fell. The rain came down. You can do it. Oh. You can do it. But you see, your challenge is you are hearing negative news. Negative event. That person is a bad man. This one is a bad person. This one. So when you meet people, only bad things come to your mind. No positive thing. Nothing positive. Nothing. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. <laughs> Faith. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I say, so the word of faith comes via the written word of God, which is the Logos. This one. It comes by this. This is the Logos. It's written. It's down. You can read. You can see the letters. Now hear this. For with the heart, man believed unto righteousness, according to John 10, 10. Uh, sorry, Romans 10, 10. But the spirit of faith is different both in operation and source. It is not generated, but it is impacted. The spirit of faith is impacted. The spirit of faith is impacted. It is not generated. Now, the word of faith comes by hearing the word. But the spirit of faith is impacted. So, you meet a man who carries enough faith to speak to a dead man to rise. And when the more you listen to the man, the more your faith, you are impacted with faith. Faith comes on you like they're pouring water on you. That event, when you rise from that place and you go to the mortuary and look at the dead man and say, Get up, the man will get up. Why? You have received enough from a man who has impacted your spirit. Bishop Ben Sidahosa, late memory. Was in church, went to church one day, and then his pastor was preaching about faith. You can heal the sick. When the close service, you can raise the dead. He went to the pastor. Pastor, have you raised the dead before? No, no. But I know it's possible. That you have raised the dead before? Yes, I'm, I'm going to town. That what? I'm going to raise the dead. He took his bicycle from house to house in a city called Benin City in Nigeria. When he get here, has anyone died here? He said, No. Go to the next house. Is anyone dead here? No, he was roaming, looking for dead people to raise. Then they got to the house, one house, saw people crying. What happened? They said, A small girl is dead. Ah, oh, don't cry. I came to raise her. They're like, Huh? Came to do what? To raise the dead. What? You're the small boy. Ah, yes. My pastor says, <laughs> The Bible says, You can raise the dead. So bring me the dead. I want to pray for the, the person. Upon consultation, he said, Well, go he's in, the, in the room. Little girl, he got there. So, little girl, she just said, Talita Kumai. So, he thought Talita Kumai was, was the name of the, <laughs> of the girl. <laughs> so, he said, What's the name of the girl? Because he said, Jesus asked of the name of the girl. Then, the, then he, he also asked of 
He said, What's the name of the girl? Then they mentioned. He said, So if it's Mar- Margaret, he said, Margaret, Kumai. Huh? And because of how he was determined in his spirit, when he declared, the girl stood up. And that's how jubilation started in his village. That's how revival began in his town. Praise the Lord. I read that book, Fire in My Bones. Go get it and read it. You understand what I'm talking about? Fire in my bones. Why? The word of God is able to, 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 to cultivate fire or ignite fire in your bones to the intent that you can't sit down and see other people suffer. You can't sit down and see other people go through trouble. You can't bear it. You must bring them the solution. Turn and tell your neighbor, I am a solution bearer. I am a solution carrier. Hallelujah. Very crucial. But all this will happen by faith, not by mouth. By faith. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. This is the ultimate in the school of faith. So for anyone to operate by faith, the person must understand. Because the spirit of faith is the spirit of exploit. The spirit of faith is the spirit of exploit. For anyone to see the manifestation of the power of God, it takes faith. It takes what? It takes what? I was in Accra last Sunday preaching in my friend's church, Prophet uh, Entry's church. Whilst I was preaching, when I finished ministry, I was just about handing over the microphone. A young lady ran out. Papa, I said, yes. I have a problem. Pray for me. So said, what is it? Because God didn't show me that one. Once God didn't show me, I won't. That my head, my head, I have had this headache for close to eight months now. Ah. What happened? Your head? Ah, yes. I said, lift up your hands. When I raised my hand, I said, in the name of, because already within me, I knew anything that comes before God's presence must be healed. Any situation that gets to his presence must find solution. I said, in the name of Jesus, get out. The power of God carry her. Went and dropped her somewhere. She got up. It's gone. Wow. You mean instantly? Yeah. There, there, there. Later she came. After I closed. What happened? That when before the lockdown, I was doing business with a friend. Then when the lockdown came, my friend said, business is not good. So it's a supermarket. So we're closing it. So you go home. I'll get back to you. The friend closed the supermarket, sold all the things to someone, took the money and disappeared and left her. So when she heard of the news, went to the shop the following time, saw a different person, the whole place, everything changed. Ah, what happened? Oh, we bought the place. Call the friend, please. No avail. Calling, switch off. Look at my friend, nowhere to be found. She developed a headache. For seven to eight months, she can't, she can't bear it. But instantly, when God got involved, that, that devil that was ravaging her health disappeared. Why? Faith was at work in the church. Even now, whatever you carry from the house and came here, you will leave it here and go home. If that amen can be louder, you are the one I'm talking to. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The word of faith, when believe, has to be appropriated to get results. So when you read the word of faith, if you believe it, you have to put it to action in order to get results. That's word of faith. That is to generate the faith from the word. Now, we're talking about the spirit of faith in this dimension. Hear this. But the spirit of faith brings you under open or under heavenly influence. So with the spirit of faith, you don't need to generate anything. You don't need to sow seed. You don't need to do anything. As soon as you are you are you are able to apprehend, receive it instantly, it begins to work for you. Word of faith, you sow seed, seed sowing. It's an act of word of faith. Mm-hmm. Prophetic seed, pastoral seed, evangelistic seed, ministry seed, 
television seed, whichever seed you are sowing, is as a result of the word of faith. You are acting based on the word. But the spirit of faith, as I'm preaching, you are grappling it to go heal a cripple. Tell the cripple, rise up. And the man whose legs has been crippled for years will turn up and begin to wobble around and begin to walk around. Uh -huh. That is how the spirit of faith is impacted. Praise the Lord. I said, oh. now, now all the stories you read about, about people who live in the old or in the past, who work miracles, that was their time. You, this is you, your time. I say it is you, your time. And you too must leave a legacy. You must leave a record so that when you are dead and gone, others will come and mention your name and say in the time of Abigail, in the time of Godwin, in the time of Maxwell, they raised how many dead bodies? How? Because you also took the opportunity of the fact that this was your timing and your season and you began to walk by faith and operate by faith. This is your time. I said, this is your time. It will not pass you by. I said, it will not pass you by. That moves you beyond the natural or the natural realm into the realm of the unlimited exploit. Unlimited exploit. Number one, the source. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number one. Deuteronomy 28, verse number one. Quickly, let's see what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 28, verse one. We look at the source the source. It says, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that or all his commandment which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. If you will hearken Haki means listen. Haki means pay attention. If you will pay attention to the word of the Lord your God, and if you will obey the word and operate by the command of the Lord, then God, he said your God, he will elevate you. He will lift you up above other nations of the world. So, you don't get there by just talking. You get there by hearing and then acting. You hear the word and you act based on the word. Praise God. We are talking about faith in this context. Faith. The operation by faith. Operating by faith. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You hear the word. Then you act on the word. I say it is one thing to hear a man through his writing. It is but it is another thing to hear the voice of, of, of the man on the tape or on the radio or on Facebook, others are watching us. Whereas the word of faith comes via written word, that's Logos. Word of faith comes through written word. It comes through the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it. That is the word. So the more of the word you 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 you, you are able to cultivate, bury into into your spirit, the more of God you carry within you. Hallelujah! I say Hallelujah. But I'm talking about whereas the word of faith comes via the written word, that's Logos. The spirit of faith is impacted by hearing the voice of God. That is the spoken word or the rima. So, the word of God guarantees, or sorry, generates faith. But the voice of God impacts the spirit of faith. Hello? Hello? The word of God generates faith in you. But the spirit of faith impacts to you the spirit of faith. Is someone here? Is someone here? Very crucial. I was I listened to a, a, a testimony about Apostle John Sulemana. So one of his sons was living in Germany. The guy has no paper. He's a Nigerian. And you know how we Africans can travel 
to other nations and behave. No people. He was, he was living like a citizen. No document. Not, no passport. No permit to stay. Nothing. You have ever traveled before, you know. Even go to Togo. Ordinary Togo here. You see Togo. Togo, they, they may spare you. Go to Benin Republic and you want to enter Ghana. You see what they do to you. You appreciate the fact that Ghana is the best place on earth. Best place on best place on I'm telling the truth. All the other people watching us across the world come to Ghana. It's the most peaceful, most stable, most most, <coughs> most coolest place on earth. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you enter Kutoka, they will welcome you well. <coughs> other countries. By the time you're getting to Migrin, the way they look at you, your heart is starting pumping. Are they turning back or what? Who the Saki? Now, <clears throat> this man happened to hear God. God said, Go to France and preach. He said, I have no paper. How do I travel from Germany to France? I think that time, the European Union, <clears throat> it wasn't that. They said, So you couldn't tra- cut across. You had to enter with passport and with visa. Today is is is, is link. So you don't need. You can just pick car from France and enter to Germany without anyone asking you anything. No bother. It's no bother. The guy said, "I have no paper. How will I go?" The God said, "Go." So he go to the airport. Now, please listen. Those who can obey, they see the hand of God at work in their life. The reason why you don't see the hand of God in your life is because you doubt God too much. Anytime he says do something, say, "Ah, am I the only one?" Why should I be the one doing it? Why are, are others not doing it? The guy got, he has no passport, no document. And even the France, if they get him at the airport, they will carry him, put his plane, the next available plane, and deport him. He was in the queue for immigration check to enter plane and go to France to go and do the assignment. Uh, he got to five people. He said, God, this thing is too dangerous. He said, stay. He got to five. The Lord said, Ten, go to the washroom. He entered the washroom. See, the Lord said, Pray. He, he sat on the, on the, uh, how do I call it, in WC, and was praying in tongues. He prayed uh, 30 minutes. The Lord said, Stop, go out. When he opened the door, he was in France airport toilet. He came out of France. Their toilet. I'm talking about God catapulting somebody without plane, paying plane fare, without p- paying for passport, without paying for ticket, without paying for anything. From Germany toilet to France toilet. He opened the gate, came out, walked out of the airport, went to do whatever I did. When he finished, he said, God, now how do I go back? Say the same way you came, the same way you are going back. Go back to the airport, enter the toilet, begin to vibrate in tongues. He did the same thing, landed back to his destination. Why? The God we serve, He is a supernatural God. He is able to do anything if only you can hold on to Him. If only you can hold on to His word, you will get there. I said, You will get there. I said, You will get there. In the name of Jesus Christ. I shout in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The voice of God impacts the spirit of faith. It is hearing the voice of God that impacts the spirit of faith and confer on you exploit. Because when you hear the voice of God on any issue, that issue is settled. If you hear God's voice on any issue, any issue, health, marriage, business, education, and the issue that is a challenge around you. One thing you need is the voice of God. And I stand here this morning and I speak into your life that the heavens are open over your destiny. Let that amen sound like tender. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. For instance, see, I had a lot of discouragement when God called me into ministry. Yeah. Because a lot of people came around. Others asked, you are too young. Why don't you enjoy life? So that when you grow old, you become a preacher. 
Why do you want to be a preacher as young as you are? I said, God says so. I remember meeting an elderly man who is a, a man of God. He has been in the music for years. He said, young man, I want to advise you. I have been seeing you around every day around this area to do evangelism. I know which school did you complete? I mentioned that. Hey, eh, then you did well. Oh. That's wonderful. So what is your intention? I said, my intention is to preach the Bible. I know. Leave it and go and look for work. Look for. Go and look for. I said, God asked me to preach. <laughs> it's not easy. Oh. It's not easy being a pastor. Oh. It's not like today. Oh. Today, anybody I talk, I just kind of have to say, Charlie, this is what you need to do. Let me go and look for some mango tree underlines. Let me start some church. Let's clap. Hey, come, come, everybody, come. Let's, we're, we're doing church, new church. What's the church? We are international, intercontinental, global ministry of prayer. And, and, and that's all. Somebody sent me his church name. When I read it, I laugh. I can't remember the name. I told him, I said, this is totology. Totology. He said, we are inter, inter, international, global ministry of warriors. I said, ah, which one is this one? International, global ministry of warriors. So they, they are war <laughs> All right. All right. Let me leave that one there. But what am I saying? I'm talking about the fact that people can discourage you. Sell man of things. And this thing, the way it's working this way, me, I have ever experienced that if it's working like this, it means it don't work. It means that you are going to fail. Usually when things begin to work like this, it means that something bad is about to happen. They discourage me. But I still held on. And the man said one thing. He said, unless you have faith, unless you have what? You have what? And faith is now. The substance of things, or the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. So I was hoping for it, hoping for success, hoping for breakthrough, hoping to make it. Others say it can't work. It's not easy. It can't work. It's not easy. It can't work. Hallelujah. But the spirit of faith, which I encountered through the voice of God that I heard gave me the wings to fly and it made it possible for me to be uh, or impossible for me to be discouraged the Bible says in Psalm 29 the verse number 3 the voice of the Lord is upon the waters Psalm 29 the verse number 3 Psalm 29 the verse number 3 the voice of the Lord is upon the waters quickly upon the waters the God of glory tendered the Lord is upon many waters. Why? The voice of God, when uttered, nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop the manifestation for which the voice was uttered. Praise God. I say, praise God. Let me hear your response. I say, praise God. Hallelujah. Very crucial. Very, very important. And we know from scriptures that the word of God is referred to as what is according to Ephesians 5 the verse number 20, 26 he says that he may sanctify them through the washing of water by the word so the voice of God is upon the waters the voice of the Lord is upon many waters and the word of God is the water praise the Lord I say praise the Lord hallelujah the word is watering your faith this morning I say your faith is being watered this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. So behind every verse of scripture is the voice of God. And when what is written is voice into you, you become unmovable. You become untouchable. When the written word is voice into your life, the logos is voice into your life, you become unmovable. Nothing will be able to shake you. From today, what others see as challenge, you will walk over them. Yeah. If that amen can be louder, the blessing is faster. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ezekiel said, the spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me and he sat me off, set me upon my feet. Ezekiel 2.2. The voice of God, God spoke to Ezekiel. He says, 
and the spirit entered into me when God spoke unto me. So anytime the word of God is spoken, the spirit of God is released to enter into people. This morning, the spirit of God is entering you now. I say it is entering you now. It says the spirit entered me or into me when he spoke unto me and sat me or set me upon my feet that I heard him that speak unto me. The spirit. The spirit. Once the word comes, it comes with the spirit. It comes with the spirit. The spirit of it. The spirit of it. From today, you would dare every impossibility around your family. I said you will dare every impossibility in your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. I shout in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't hear the voice of God and still be down. It's not possible. You can't hear God. You can't hear his voice and still be where you are. It's not possible. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me leave it here. My time is gone. Next week I continue. Operating by the spirit of faith. So whenever you pick the word of God and you begin to speak the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hey, 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 hey. That is the voice of God. You are uttering the voice of God. You are uttering the word of God through your mouth. Now, once the word comes out, the spirit of God backs the word. And the word is activated. Whoever it gets in contact with, a miracle happens. A miracle takes place. You are living here this morning with your miracle. I said you are living here with your miracle. Let that amen sound like thunder. Hallelujah. This is your day. This is you your day. You are living here to go and raise dead people. I said you are living here to talk to cripples to stand up. Deaf ears will open. Blind eyes will open. The lamb will walk. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God he is the same yesterday he is the same today he is the same forever if God say yes no man can say no if God be for you no man can be against you I declare over your life this morning that God is on your side power is on your side favor is on your side glory is on your side Lift up your hand and shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. Hallelujah.